Michelle, I'm the Assistant Warden um, at Holm Jeans Nature Reserve. Um, we're just on our way at the moment just to actually test the electric fence. We have 50 sheep that are grazing um, an area of the reserve um, and every so often we have to check, um, make sure the battery's working obviously to ensure the electric fence is keeping the sheep in. Um, so my first job of the day is to check that, so we're just on our way. <laughs> Um, switched on the light is flashing and it's beeping as you can hear so that's a good sign okay right first job of the day is done now I checked the electric fence and that's working absolutely fine which is brilliant and um, the next job is to do some strimming and um, we have a white post trail which is the main um, public access route along the middle of the reserve um, and obviously this time of year the vegetation grows up really rapidly so part of my job is to make sure that the the route is actually clear um, and nice and tidy for the public to get through um, also because the reserve opens at 10 and closes at 5, it's now quarter past 9 so I need to make sure that the strimming is done before the reserve opens, obviously to make sure there's no obstruction to the public. So that's where we're heading now. I've just finished strimming. Um, we've, there's a few volunteers that are giving up their time um, to help us, which is much appreciated. Um, and one of the volunteers, Maria, she's helping me complete the rest of the strimming. Um, and I'm off now to do a butterfly, butterfly survey. Um, the butterfly survey is done once a week here, obviously just during the summer with the butterfly season. Um, and we do it between quarter to 11 and quarter to 3, um, which are the main peak hours of heat. Um, it is getting towards the end of the butterfly season now so there's not going to be as many around but there'll still definitely be hopefully some that we'll see along the way. Um, and we've got a fix, it's a transect that we're doing and there's a fixed route that we do every week um, and this is the first part of it so we'll, off we go and hopefully see some butterflies. These surveys, um, all the information that we record are collated together um, and it goes towards um, a national butterfly survey um, so we can find out the data and distribu distribution of the butterflies around the country. Um, here we actually have a small heath, I don't know if you can just see flying away there. Um, the small heaths, they tend to um, rest on short grassland paths um, and when they close their wings, they've got their upper part of the wing is very orange with a black dot. Um, and they're quite small butterflies. Let's see if we can see another one along here. Um, oh, there's one just flying over there. So I'll just write these down. Um, a larger part, part of my job is patrolling, um, particularly on days like this. The weekends, um, patrolling kind of takes over your day-to-day -day basis, whereas through the week when it's quiet, so generally you get on with your physical management roles. But as I say, every day is kind of unpredictable. Um, but yeah, we literally, um, it's so important to interact with the public. Um, so you're literally, they see your presence, they're aware that you're around and they know they can come and ask you for question, you know, any help, what sightings have been seen. Um, but it's also good to kind of, um, you know, ask them what they've seen and um, any new birds, just so you're keeping up to date with it. Um, and so, and kind of creating that, um, well, I suppose it's a bond really, so that they're kind of, you know, there's a good balance and a good respect from both of you. Okay, so this is one of our hides. So I'll just go in and find out what we've got out on the pools. We have a heron, mollard, pink footed geese flying over. Um, so straight in front of me here to the right is actually a, a wind turbine. Um, so that is actually being constructed to, wimp, to pump water. Um, it's not actually in production at the moment, but shortly it will be. Uh, so that will be a brilliant source of actually pumping water to areas of the reserve that we want. Darkness. <laughs> We've just actually left the hides now. Um, I've seen what's out and about, so I'm aware of what birds are around to tell the public. Um, I'll also pop into the visitor centre shortly as well because I have a, a board with the whereabouts of the birds, etc., what, um, what's been sighted. Um, and the next job now is to go to the beach. Um, with it being such a nice day and it's a weekend, there's a lot of beach goers. Um, so my job is just to make sure that everyone's behaving themselves. There's no fires. People are respecting the reserve, not climbing up the dunes um, and respecting the sea defences. Um, so that's where we're off now before lunch. 
And I've just had reports from the warden. Um, there's a jet ski really close in at sea. Um, so as we're out there, I'm going to have words um, and explain to him, obviously, the fact that the disturbance that he's causing to the birds, etc. Um, so let's go and try and find him out on the sea. This is the beach, as you can see. Uh, it's really beautiful. These are the sea defences that we have um, that stop to help protect the dunes itself. Um, you can actually see from looking at, along the erosion um, from all the, the high tide and the forceful tides. Uh, we've actually cordoned off an area and, and prevent, for health and safety reasons, the public going within that area. Um, and if we see anyone going within the sand dunes, obviously we explain to them um, that obviously health and safety issues, but also um, they're actually helping to erode um, the purpose of the sea defences being put there. So it's just literally keeping a constant eye out um, and educating people and making sure everyone's behaving. Oh, everyone seems to be behaving themselves at the moment. It's always good. In the summer, um, from, oh, when was it, April time to a few weeks ago, uh, beginning of September, we actually had little terns and ring plovers, um, which are beach nesting birds, and they actually come along, they fly from Africa to breed on our beaches, which is amazing, and they come all the way here, and they actually dig like a scrape um, in the sand, and they put their eggs in there. Um, so we cordoned off an area down at Gore Point, and an area down at Thornham, um, primarily for them just to nest in there without being disturbed, because um, obviously in the summer it attracts lots of beachgoers, um, and they're a schedule one bird, which means they're, they're really rare in little terns, and they're protected by law. Um, so part the big part of the summer role, as well as looking for beach ghosts, making sure they were behaving and abiding by the reserve. Um, also, we were making sure that people respected the little terns, kept away from the cordon and didn't disturb them. I think probably the most rewarding bit of the job is just just being out here and just seeing so much all the time and um, I'm just out and about and you just I just see something new like literally weekly more or less it's unbelievable and like a new bird or it's, it's brilliant and even and it's not just visually it's it, hearing things as well like improving my like bird calls just for able to associate it so you know it's it, there's too many things really to say what do I like the most I love everything really about it so Right, I'm just going to go over here to speak to these people. Um, there's a dog scene just running onto the reserve and um, then running back again, so I'm just going to ask them to keep their dog under tight control. Hello there, sorry to bother you. Um, just with this being a reserve, we just ask people to keep their dogs under tight control. Well, okay. um, just because I saw him running up there, just with right, being a reserve, yeah. if that's all right. Okay, just, thanks ever so much. Sure, <laughs> cheers. Brilliant. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> okay, no worries, I'll be with you in a few minutes. Right, so by the sounds of things, the jet skier is heading because the golf course um, is in Old Hunstanton, which is the next village along from Hull next to the sea. Um, so he's making his way to Hunstanton by the sounds of things, which is, which is a good thing. And if he's far out at sea, obviously that's better um, for the birds because he's not causing any disturbance. So we're just on our way now. Um, we have sheep uh, that you might have seen earlier just grazing. Um, so a, a job every couple of days is to count the sheep. Um, and also to check their health, which may sound like an easy job counting sheep, but trust me, it's not always that simple. Um, because there's lots of vegetation and ridges up and down, they do tend to um, hide. Um, and once they disperse and break up, it can be a bit difficult. So we're just going to head over here and hopefully, in an ideal world, they'll all be congregated together and easy to count. So let's see. <laughs> Forty-nine, fifty. Yeah, we've got fifty there. Um, one was hiding, but we found it again. So there's fifty sheep. I'm just gonna have a scan round just to make sure they're mobile and happy. All right, it's got to five o'clock and it's the end of my day. Um, the time has flown by as it always does. Um, I just really want to say I hope you've enjoyed spending the day with me. Um, and if you do wish to pursue um, this work in this industry, in this field of work, I wish you the best of luck um, and I assure you that you'll enjoy it as much as I do because I just have a fantastic time all the time getting paid for doing this out here, seeing so much different wildlife. Um, and yeah, good luck in the future and maybe I will see you one day out in the, 
the conservation industry, you never know. But good luck, take care, and thanks for your time. Bye.